Okay, we've come to our Ten Commandments study as we do the first commandment. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy 5, 7. Deuteronomy 5, 7. And this is the commandment here. Of all ten. That somebody says. Well I keep the commandments. You don't keep this one. Deuteronomy 5 7. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And Romans 13 9. Romans 13 9. New Testament. To the church. See, we're not under the law. The law doesn't save me. But being a Christian, a new creature, a new man, my conduct of a Christian, the law shows me what I am to do, what I'm not to do, not for salvation, but to be pure in the eyes of God, what is accepted by God, what is disproved by God, and what is right and what is wrong. The law is a schoolmaster to say, hey, I'm a sinner. Romans 13, 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. And if you're going to, Jesus said, and we'll look at it in a moment. The very first commandment is God is to be first all the time, every time. Person, place, or thing. Now, if you woke up this morning and the very first thought you had on your mind, very first thought, God, then you done well. Anything else? I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, if I hit snooze, or oh, if I can have a little more sleep. Oh, I wanna. And then you sin. Have you ever gotten yourself into trouble in anything because you have not sought God? That's a violation of the first commandment. If you have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you have violated the first commandment. Unless you're just wicked and vile, you don't care. Because if you want to do right with God, you want to have that fellowship with Him, if you were to think of God like you're supposed to, then we wouldn't be sinning. The fact is, we do that sin that approaches us, and you know, oh, I don't, can't believe I've done that. Yeah, because you took your eyes off God. Had you been thinking about God, you would not be doing that sin. So Luke 16, Luke 16, the very first commandment, And no one ever thinks of God first all the time. No one. We failed. You know what Jesus' first thing was for his entire 33 and a half years on this planet? Fulfilling the will of the Father. And nothing else. Seeking the glory of the Father and no one else. Seeking what pleased the Father. Nothing else. 16.13, Luke. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
You can't say you put God first and Little League has interrupted your midweek service for church. You can't say, oh, I keep all the commandments and you're not in church Sunday night because of an unsafe family picnic. You cannot say you love God fully when you will hurry up the preacher, hoping he would hurry up so you can get home and watch that television show that's been going on for weeks and weeks and months and months. You can't say properly, oh, you know, God is first in my life and you don't go out and tell people about the gospel. And the excuse is, I let my light shine. It don't say let your light shine. It says go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you don't have your mindset, you don't obey God all the way. You have sinned and violated the first commandment. And listen, I violate the first commandment. If I were to say I keep the commandments, I would be testifying of a false witness. And when someone does say, oh, I keep, the, I keep all the commandments and violate the first, now he's violated that he's become a false witness. For all have sinned come short of glory of God. Exodus 23:13. And the thing is, when I've heard people and a few times, not often, when I heard someone say they, you know they keep the commandments, the first one comes into mind. Exodus 23, 13. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Have you mentioned Allah? Oh, the Catholic Mary? Or how about have you mentioned that ball team that ball game team that you so admire? That you got the hats, the pendants, and all the other memoria of that team. How about the actor or actress that your favorite one? Can you name all the movies and uh, names they've become and can't name the twelve disciples of the Lamb? Can you tell me what your favorite stock car driver has come in for the last 12 races in position and yet can't tell me the name of the 12 tribes of Israel? You see, other gods may not be, you know, a Buddha. It may not be, you know, Apollo. Other gods in front of God first can be a person, place, or thing. Your lifelong ambition for that, that future vacation may be your God. Grand Canyon, Mount Rushmore, whatever it is, that may be your God. And you've sinned. Your career, your children. may have had you violate the first commandment, God first. Even Paul, the Apostle Paul was, he had a mindset for the children of Israel, which is correct, but God wanted him to go to the Gentiles. God did not want him to go to Jerusalem. But Paul did what he wanted to do. Jeremiah 25, 6. So hearing what this right now, we don't, and we will, but we don't need to look at all the other commandments. We violated this commandment. God is not always first. Isaiah 25, 6. That's a sin. 
That is a sin. To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin, James said. Is it good to keep God first? Yes. Do you? No? That's a sin. You violated the first commandment. Jeremiah 25, verse 6. And go not after other gods, and serve them. Now, I know the context here is Baal. But, I mean, do you have the tickets for all the opening games? And to worship them. Do you know the names of the people involved and their status? And provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Have you got a person, place, or thing of head of God? That's a sin. Have you started your day in prayer for God? No. That's a sin against God. Are you in a public restaurant? Have you bowed your head and asked the Lord right there at that table to bless your food? No? That's not God first. You sin against God. Have you done it with the with the party that is sitting with you? No? That's a sin against God. Have you read your Bible in the break room? No? That's against you, you mean use your break time for something else? When we get to New Jerusalem, it's going to be all about God. See, other gods are, you know, people think religion. Other gods are persons, places, or things that are more important than God. And the devil knows what they are, and God knows what they are. You know what they are, but you may cover them up. You may make an excuse. It's still a sin. Deuteronomy 6 5. Deuteronomy 6 5. Hear, O Israel. Okay, it's to the Jewish people. The Lord our God is one. Lord. Is, is our God one? He's one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Would you not think that would be good for a Christian? Your heart goes deeply out for God. Holy and fully. No? You sinned against God. And with all thy soul, your eternal part of you is all for God. And with all thy might. Everything you do, you do for the power of God. No. You've sinned against God and violated the first commandment. Chapter 10, verse 12. I mean, I know we're reading in the law. I know it's for Israel, but would it not be good for a Christian to give it all our heart, all our mind, or all our soul? Man, think about as Christians, if we were to give God that, what God would be able to do through us. How's your revival time doing? Everybody, every church, oh, revival, go have revival. How's it going? Have you put prayer to it or you, what? Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, okay, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. Is that not good for a Christian? Honor the Lord with fear? To walk in his way. Alright, we're not in the law, but the Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Weep with those that weep. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Are those not Christian commandments? How are you doing? And to love him. I know people sacrifice their family. Picnics. The ball game, a little league, ballerina classes. And those people I know from, from ages past, they're not doing too good in church services today. Yeah. 
They're not high on the Lord. And when somebody does come around, and when somebody does do right, and they're excited on the Lord, uh, it's like a weirdo. We got stuff there, Paul. I'm going to unfriend them. They're weird. No, we're not weird. We're just on fire for the Lord. Love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. I don't love the Lord with all my heart and my all my soul. There has been troubles and problems in my life that I have not sought the Lord. There's been times and situations and it's going on. And then, oh, you know what? I haven't prayed about it. I didn't put God first, did I? I didn't put God first. That is a sin. To him that knows do good. Hey, we got trials, we got tribulations. What's going to be the good thing to do? Go right to God. Have you? I I failed. I'm a sinner. And we need to repent. Chapter 11, verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments to the Jews, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God. Okay? I love the Lord. I love Jesus, my sweet Jesus. And to serve him with all your heart. Have you witnessed? Have you passed out gospel tracts? Have you prayed for other people? I mean, are your prayers for others, not just yourself? Are your prayers thankful prayers rather than give me prayers? Are you ready to go to church to be a blessing rather than receive one? See, they say joy is Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. You messed up joy, you get oi 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 ja. You get some other kind of word out of J O Y. You rearrange the letters and you violate the first commandment. You move Jesus from the first letter to yourself, or you move others out of place in the word joy. You don't have joy no more, and you sinned against God. Joshua 22.5 You need somebody to tell you these things because the pulpits today are not doing it. The pulpits in the world today, they're going so for the world and the devil. They might teach you it's okay to not know what sex you are. I don't know why they would do that. How about somebody gets up, open the Bible and say how to love God and how to do right with God and how to show that, you know what? In the best state we're in, we are in, we're all vanity. I am not as good a Christian as I think I am. 22.5 But take diligent heed to do the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, and to cleave to unto him, that means join together, to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. I know many people who say, oh, I love Jesus. And you don't do nothing for Jesus. <coughs> and James writes to us, okay, you got to have that faith. Well, let's see the works. You know, a good spouse would expect you to show, you know, okay, you say you love me. But, you know, you got to show it. We're not saved by works. But our works will show how much we love. And who you, what you, where you give your love, time, effort, money, and goods to will be the one that you love more. And there are more people who spend more money for dog food than they do for missions. And they turn around, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, I see smoke at the judgment seat of Christ. Why? 
because your pastor would not preach messages like this, and you would not read the Bible like you should. It's what the Bible says. Matthew 22, 37. Matthew 22, 37. Who you love is who you're going to want to be with. How is that? Who you love is who you're going to want to be with. Your desire. Matthew 22, 37. If the Lord Jesus Christ came back today, he wouldn't break my mood. He wouldn't upset me. And yet, there are Christians out there, probably all over the world, I don't know if it's few or many, I don't know how many, but if the Lord came back right now, he, he would accept their plan. Lord, I was going to graduate in the fall. Lord, I was going to get married at this time. Lord, I was expecting Christmas gifts. Why did you come now? And I've even been told that there, there's a hymn song out there, you know, Jesus wait a little longer. Well, you definitely can't say, oh, I keep the Ten Commandments. And we're on the first one. And almost like the full study we did prior to this, Boy, when I did that study, man, I found out I was a fool. Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. This is Jesus speaking. With all thy soul, with all thy might. This is the first and great commandment. God keeps books. God keeps records. What are your records going to show? And if you proclaim to say, I keep all the commandments, you just now violated the false witness. And I kind of laugh inside myself when I hear people, like I said, not, not many I've heard, but when they do say, oh, I keep the commandments, I laugh at myself. You just lied, so that's a, that's a, that's a commandment breaker right there. You know what one of the commandments is for Christians? Ready? How you do in this one? Study and show thyself approved under God and workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you have a modern Bible? You violate the first commandment. Because your modern Bible don't say that. So evidently one of the commandments to the Christian by God is if we serve him, what we've seen over, we love and serve him, is to read your Bible. How you doing? I read my Proverbs. I read my Psalms. There are 65 other books in the Bible. How about them? I don't give you no leeway. I don't give myself leeway. Luke. Luke 6. Luke, six, uh, Luke 10, I think. In my horrible writing. Let's see. Luke 10, 22. Oh, I got terrible here now. I have to pass on this one. Twenty-seven. All right, Luke ten twenty-seven. This is it. And he answered and said, "Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. He's your God, my God, with all thy heart." Guilty. With all thy soul, guilty. And a couple times I've been afraid of dying. I mean, I'm anxious to see the Lord, but there's been a couple times, oh Lord, not now. I mean, that soul is your eternal part. With all thy strength. Do you give everything you do over to God? Take my yoke upon you. It's my burden is like, you, hey, Lord, take this and let's do it together. Did you get in trouble? Well, then I guess you didn't give it to God. With all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. How are we doing? 
How you doing sports and children in sports? And your spouse and everything. You know, it's great to love your spouse. Does your spouse get offended when they say, I love Jesus more than I love you? I'll tell you one thing. A spouse that says, I love Jesus and serve the Lord and, and do the best ability and obey God. Man, they're going to love that spouse, according to the Bible. But you knock Jesus off the throne and put somebody ahead of that throne, you got trouble. You got problems. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Whenever we put God down and lift something else up, whatever it may be, we're in trouble. He say, what what could that be that we put God off the throne and, and put on that throne? Take the dictionary. And take God out of the dictionary and Jesus Christ out of the dictionary. Take those two words out of the dictionary. And every word that's in that dictionary you can put, put ahead of God or Jesus Christ. And that's a sin. And what I put ahead of God may not be what you put ahead of God. It's still a sin. We all violate the first commandment. Exodus 23, 13. And in all things that I have <clears throat> said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of other gods, neither let it be named out of thy mouth. How are the names out of your mouth? Do you speak more of material things than you do holy things? Deuteronomy 6.14 Deuteronomy 6.14 For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Do you ever think about God being jealous? And yet you put that jealousy in motion when you put something ahead of God. You made God jealous. That's a sin. Deuteronomy 7, 4, 7, 4. For they will turn away thy son from following me. They may serve other gods so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. God gets angry. God gets jealous when you have put something else ahead of him. It is not pleasing to God Almighty, to the Lord Jesus Christ, that something has replaced their position in your life. And in the family, the Bible says in Ephesians, God the Father, God the Son, the husband, the wife, the children. We have broken families today because that sequence is all out of whack and even God is removed. We have broken families today because the Father is removed. And when you got a broken family because you got a broken relationship with God, don't blame anybody else but yourself for the brokenness. You had made God jealous and you had made God angry. You violated the first commandment. Deuteronomy 8, 19. Deuteronomy 8, 19. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them. I testify against you this day. You shall surely perish. Your worship of other gods. Making God angry. Making God jealous. 
forgetting about God may bring an early death. May. It's a very serious business when we forget God and put Him somewhere else. He ought to be the first place. Too many times He becomes the last place. 1 Corinthians 8, 5. 1 Corinthians 8, 5. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many, and lords many, there are other gods out there, the Bible says, but to us, written to Christians, to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, we by Him. So what do you do as a Christian when you have replaced God the Father and God the Son with another God's You have ruined that Christian fellowship. You have removed your father, God, who has adopted you into the family. You have taken him down and say, well, this is much more better. That makes God angry. And that makes God jealous. A holy and righteous God has the right to say, me first. And if it's not me first, you're in trouble. That's not me saying, that's God's ability. Galatians 4.8 And if you don't approve of this, this is Bible. You've got a problem with God. It needs to be straightened out. Because you know what comes from not having God first in your life, not loving the Lord and serving the Lord and giving the Lord all you got? Pride will enter in. The pride of persons, the pride of place, or the pride of things. And as we read early, God will be forgotten. And many Christians today, God is totally forgotten, never realized they would be in such a bad condition that they are today, because they let one God take the throne. You give the devil an inch and he'll take it all. Galatians 4 8. How be it then, when ye knew not God, he did serve unto them which are by nature are no gods. The Bible st clearly states there are other gods out there. What are they? They are nouns, person, place, or things, and you fill in the blank. I love the definition of a noun, person, place, because that could be anything and everything. And it's definitely going to hit you. And if I mention a ball team, uh, that may not hit you. That may not be your area, but if I say a person, place, or thing, I've hit you. You have a noun in your life that took and takes over the proper noun, God the Father, God Almighty. And that does not please God. Romans 3.30 Romans 3.30 Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision by faith. Alright, there are gods out there. But there is one God. There are gods out there, but there is the God of all gods. 
And you do not need to mess with the gods. You need to love and serve God. Plain and simple. Galatians 3.20. Galatians 3.20. Now a mediator is not a meter of one, but God is one. Again, one God. There are gods, but there is one God. And to some Christians, there are gods. But there's not the one God. And when it comes to serving the one God, they're out there serving the other gods. Whatever they be. Whatever class and name of noun they be. Ephesians 4, 6. Ephesians 4, 6. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all, and you all written to Christians and yet we violate that verse when we take God down and put God's back up do we not when we violate the first commandment we take that one God and put it with God's And we don't make him above all. 1 Timothy 2.5 Again, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And when you say Mary can get you to heaven, you have taken Jesus Christ off the throne and you have thrown him in the garbage can and you have taken Mary and put her on the throne of salvation. And the Catholic Church and the Popes and the tradition will agree with that statement. Mary is better than Jesus. And you have violated the first commandment. When you say that there is something more better than the finished work of Jesus Christ. When there is another gospel. You have taken Jesus Christ off the throne. And you have placed something there. You have violated God. You have violated the first commandment. There is something more important to Jesus Christ. And woe unto you. You have sinned. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. If you have something else, someone else, somewhere else, for your basis of going to heaven and pleasing God, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, but I've got my works, I've got my priest, I've got my baptism, I've got my church, I've got, I've got. You have violated, you have sinned against God by violating the first commandment. You have not put God first. You have put a denomination, you have put a church, you have put a baptism, you have put in how good you are. Instead of Jesus Christ. And that's a sin. 2 Corinthians 11.4 2 Corinthians 11.4 Yeah, there are gods out there. Plenty of them. Too many of them. And yet there is one God. One God only, a bunch of other gods. There is one God to be worshipped. There is one God to be served. There is one God to give it all. And when you give it to other gods, person, place, or thing, you have sinned against God. When you put in your hope and glory in your work upon other gods and not Jesus Christ, you have sinned against God. 
11, 4, 2 Corinthians. For if he that cometh bringeth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receiveth another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. You better be, you better be careful. You better watch out. You better check. Better work out your salvation. Make sure you got the right salvation. Better make sure it's all in all. In God, Jehovah of the Jewish people, who's Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't get the God of Ishmael. Don't get the God of Italy. Don't get the God of America. Get the God that comes out of the King James Bible. The God that suffered and died upon Calvary's cross according to the scripture. That they took God when he died and they buried him in the ground. And God resurrected Jesus himself, his son, out of that tomb three days and three nights later according to the scripture. Any other God, any other means of salvation is not that of God. And you're not saved. So anything, anyone, anywhere could be stealing from God who is all in all. Last place, Mark 12.30. Mark 12.30. I am sorry to say I have not given God my all. All the time. And there have been times, yeah, I put all into God. And there have been times I haven't even thought about God. He's been the last thing on my mind, believe it or not. Listen. When you're sitting in that long line or standing in that long line at Walmart... <laughs> You really thinking about God? You thinking about man? I got a lot of things to do today. When the doctor is about to reveal to you your test results, what's in your mind? I'll tell you. The last couple of weeks we had air, you know, medical issues, and I'm telling you, it has been God all the way. And there have been times, and you got to listen to me on this one. There's been times in the medical issues that, you know, I, I, I said, God, you know what? I haven't prayed. Oh, no, I haven't prayed because, God, I know you're going to take care of it. I know it's going to work out to your good. But I ought to still just ask you because you want me to ask. Now, that's putting God... And that is God is first. Now you got that faith in God. You know what, God? I'm just going to pray because you want to hear me pray over it. And Lord, I know you're going to take care of it. That's faith. Worry is not of God. You know, you can't find the word worry anywhere in the Bible. The Bible replaces worry with faith. We don't have 100% faith. Jesus said, if you had faith of a mustard seed, and you can go to these places, you get this little mustard seed, put it in your necklace, put it in your ring, that, that, that. You can move a mountain. Forget about the necklace. Forget about the ring. I want to see you move that mountain. I'll tell you, I don't have the faith to move a mountain. I've never tried to do it. But Jesus said, if you had that faith, you're capable. Jesus would never have said it, not. And there are events in our life that will show how strong is the first commandment in our life. Who did we turn to? Where did we turn to? To what did we turn to? And that will answer who is your love 
who is your service and who is your mindset upon. And if you will be true with yourself, you will always say, it has not been Jesus and it has not been God at times. And we have sinned. To them that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The best, goodest thing you can do is go right to God all the time. That's the goodest. We have alternatives. In Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Right? Love him. How do we love him? With all thy heart. I'm going to tell you, a good, wonderful, faithful spouse can do you wrong. He can. You're capable. We're human. We're all of sin comes short of glory. God will never do you wrong. There is no misunderstandings with God. A spouse cannot understand everything that you're going through. Impossible. The God that loves you and the God that we're to love knows everything about you. He's the one that created you. He knows things about you that you don't even know about you. How you doing with time? How you doing with effort? When it comes to, you just can't say, oh, I love Jesus. And I believe that, and it's a wonderful hymn, how I, oh, how much I love Jesus. It's sung through congregation. I think a lot of people are going to stand to judgment seat of Christ and they're going to lose reward because they don't love Jesus, truly. And many do. And with all thy soul, that eternal being of you, does it rest totally upon God? To be absent from the body and present, glory to God, amen. At the twinkle in the eye that the trump, the Lord shall call us home, amen. I do have one fear of death. And this is not outside the scriptures. I don't want to be in a building that caves in. I've already already almost drowned to death. I would not want to do that again. Or I would not want to go in a burning fire. Or as I presently live not through death, I would not want to be in a dentist's chair without any, uh, what do you call it? Novocaine. But in those events right there, I'm not denying God. I'm just a wimp. But when you read Fox's book of Martyrs, and you read about the death of Christians for the word of God's sake, man, they go up to that, that, that faggots. That's where they burn them on. The original faggots were the sticks that they would burn Christians on. I'm using Christianity words that have been perverted by the world. When they tied them Christians to the faggot, I read stories about them singing hymns. I've heard and read about Christians went up to that faggot and kissed it to the glory of God the Father. And yeah, they suffered. And they had great pain. So even still in greatest pain, if the Holy Spirit be with us and if be put over, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe God will give us the, the victory over that. But there should be nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that would interfere with right, going home right now. Capital H. I don't think there's anybody in my family I have not witnessed to and tried and have them grow in the Lord or get saved. Can't think of one right now. I've done all I could with public ministry. I've studied and read my Bible. Enough to where God gives me another day, go out and serve the Lord and do right. With all thy mind. Does your mind wander? Mine does. Man, I can't even remember names of my church brethren. Man, if I was really doing right with the Lord, I would remember the name. 
I would give all my effort to remember that brother in Christ or that sister in Christ. And yet, have you ever just been sitting there have a name pop in your head of a person on the screen, a movie actor, or somebody in your, in your path, and that name just pop in your head? Like, where did that come from? Have you just been sitting in your chair, laying in bed, where, and you, you just, you know, you're, you're in daydreaming, you're night dreaming, you just go off and you like, well, wow. You know, I've had the greatest dreams and all that. I have seen countless countless populated people receive Christ through my preaching. And I snapped to say, wait a minute. I have sinned against God because look at what I've done. Look what God, you know, it was without Christ. How's your mind? I've heard of stories of Christian people you know, get these Alzheimer's and get, and they can still remember that hymn when it's being played at the piano. And they can't remember nothing else. Their mind is gone. I don't know if you can say shot, but you mentioned Jesus, and they can still see Jesus. How's your mind? With all thy strength, one day all those muscles are going to flap. They're going to sag. All the weightlifting are going to be able to do nothing for you. And you got old age disease, you got old age uh, problems, you, your snap, crackle, pop, it's not your cereal no more, it's you getting out of bed. Can you get out of that bed with your pains, your agonies, your troubles, and say, oh, for the glory of God today, I'll give it to you, Lord. This is the first commandment. All come short. And if you think after this study, you've gone through this whole thing, you think, look how great I am. You have sinned in self-righteousness. And you have definitely sinned by placing yourself above God in the first commandment. So, when you hear somebody say, I keep the commandments. No, you don't. And let me ask you something. Let me tell you something. If, if you're a soul winner, here's my advice. And you can memorize scripture. I, I, but remember where Exodus 20 is. Remember Exodus 20 is where the Ten Commandments are. Okay? Open you, your Bible to Exodus 20 and say, oh, you keep all the commandments. Okay. Take your finger. I say, okay, I got them right here in the Bible. Tell me what the ten are. I guarantee they'll probably be able to mention one or two out of context. If you're Catholic or a Lutheran, you'll be, you know, you, you'll miss two. Or you want to have, we'll close right now. You want to have better fun? I keep the commandments. Hand me your Bible and say, okay, show me where they are. Give me book, chapter, and verse where they are. And many will not even be able to show you the index. Don't take, I keep the command. That's one of the devil's deceiving answers. And my family and I know, as far as, the devil has a selected few answers for, for soul winners. I go to church. I'm good. He's not very good on, on you know, uh, excuses. Hypocrites go to church. That's funny because you just said you didn't go to church. That wouldn't be that cruel, but I am. <laughs> so the first commandment, even for those that are saved, God is first all the time. And if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You want to sin the name today before the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? God, I did not put you first. And Lord, next week, next Lord willing, next week, He's going to do the second commandment. I can't get by with the first commandment every day. 
The law is a schoolmaster to show I have sinned. I'm not saved by the law, but that law shows me it breaks my pride. It breaks, oh, I guess I am not that good, am I, Lord? And remember, Jesus Christ fulfilled all what was done. Jesus Christ put God first all the time. 